Shalom Aleichem. This week's Sikha, Parshish Kai Sara. Uh, fascinating Sikha about Keturah and Rashi's explanation on how we know that this is Hagar. Um, the beautiful lesson, the takeaway on how we elevate ourselves and how it's necessary and a prerequisite for being able to elevate others as well, which is the whole purpose, right? So, in Pasuk by Yosef Avram, Vayikach Isha, Shema Keturah. And the Pasuk that says that Avram took another wife, an additional wife, and her name is Keturah. So as Rashi Mefarish, Keturah Zu Hagar. So Rashi comes and he explains that Keturah is Hagar. Okay. The Nikris Keturah Hashem Shanoim Aaseyin Keturah that he that she changed her ways to be reminiscent of the Keturah, the incense which we've learned before is a very high level. It's you know it's a pleasing odor to Hashem. It's a beautiful. It's the incense is burned in the inside of the Holy of Holies. So obviously represents you know the most beautiful of all service for Hashem. So she was she, the fact that she changed her ways to be similar to the Keturahs. And then it says, Vishakashra Pisch Shalain is Davgala Odomi Yoim Shaparshami Avram. And it also points out that she to represent uh a Kesha that she tied herself, meaning she she kept herself from being intimate with, with anybody else when she became separated from Avraham. Um in the story that she was sent away with, with Yishmael, so it says that in that time. She wasn't with anybody else, which is why uh, Abraham was able to take her back, as we're going to discuss later. So, Darfin Fashtain, we have to explain something here. What's the proof from the simple explanation, right? Rashi comes to explain the simple reading of the text. So, where is he getting from the simple reading of the text that Keturah is Hagar? Seemingly, this is the opposite from the simple uh, reading of the text. Seemingly, we would say, Yosef Avraham, Vayikach Isha, Ushma, is Mashma, as Vayikach Isha, Meida, Naya, Lukichas Isha. Seemingly, this would have been a new wife, right? Keturah Hagar was already with Avraham in this house. So, seemingly, this is a reference to a new person. So, if anything, the simple reading of the text would suggest that it's not, it's not Hagar. But Nayusuf to the Fritikin, meaning it's an addition from what was already previously there. So, via Fred Taki and Medrash, Vaxi, Yosef. So the question is, on the measures why it says, the fact that it says, by Yosef, an additional. Bay, secondly, from Dan was Rashi Zog, and Svet and Tam, Mita Vav, Achibur, he uses, a, when he goes from the one that she changed her behaviors to be like Katoiris, and then goes into Vishakashra, that she tied her, she kept herself from being intimate with anybody else. He doesn't, he uses a Vav, right? Vishakashra. And she tied her, she was tied, she tied herself. Right? And a Vav, which is the line, it means and, and it's showing that it's connected. One thing is connected to the thing that came before it. So over here, it says, Ketura, Alshem Shanai And she tied herself, and she kept herself from being intimate. Sometimes Rashi brings several explanations. He'll say, another explanation is, and then he'll go on to that one. But over here, he just says, Vishakasha. So it's moving. You understand that. As Rashi learned, As does is nitzve bazundar virushim, via medrash. In the Medrash, it seems like it's two different explanations. But what Rashi is coming to show us by using a vav instead of saying davar acher, he's showing us that it's not two separate things. For vas nikras keturah, nor tzvei tamim in ein peters. Rather, it's two reasons going on one single explanation. So it's two reasons for one explanation according to Rashi, which is different than the way that the Medrash introduces the idea. Dos heis, which means that as the nam in keturah is meramiz of the beide uptights and suzamin. Keturah is a is sort of an allusion to both of these explanations all at once. So Lashon Ketairus, Shanaim I say Ketairus, that it goes on Ketairus, on Lashon Kshira, right? Aramaic, when it shows, we we, we did this actually previously, that uh, in the, the Targum, when it explains one, it uses the other, right? The letters are interchangeable. So Keturah, and Kshira, it goes on the same, you know, linguistically speaking, or it goes on Kataitis itself. So either it's on Kataitis or it's on Kshira. So both of these explanations, instead of seemingly, they seem like two different explanations, which shows that a, a, to say Dabra Akhir would have been appropriate over here, like he often does, but instead he says V of Shakasha, right? And the other. So he gives both explanations, but he puts them together as one explanation. So it's two reasons for one. So dive from first thing, we have to explain this. Rashi, 
What's his source? What's Rashi's source based on the simple reading of the text to, that gives him the authority to sort of combine them into one explanation as opposed to being two separate explanations like the Medrash uh, introduced the ideas. The question on, on the, the the question on this is that even pasuk v'teilech v'teisa zog Rashi when it says that she left and was lost, it says that she went and she she left and then was lost is a reference to the fact that she then rejoined or returned to her father's home, which is a reference to the idol worship and the things that her father was was engaged in. That she she returned to that, right? So that's what Rashi says on that verse. Referring to regarding her leaving leaving Abraham, so so how could it be that previously when it says that she left and was lost that she left and returned to her to idol worship of her father, and yet we would still say that she changed her ways to be like a tyrus? They seem like seeming completely contradictory. So the beer and them the explanation on this is like this: does versus machriach rashi to zogin katora zuhagar. Is a kasha nidin dem prati is dekem pasuk nor in dem klali is dekem sipuk on Abraham v'hagar. The the question or the 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 conflict that we're having is not necessarily on the verse or the details itself, but really on the whole story involving Abraham and Hagar, right? It's it's a it's a general conflict that we have over here, not on the particulars and the details. So Rashi hot free him the father's given as Abraham the gayeres haanashim v'sarim the gayeres haanashim. We know earlier that it says that. Abraham influenced the men of the, in communities that caused them to then convert and join the Jewish people or join Abraham. And Sarah did the same for the women. So Abraham I've mentioned from Dresden. If we're going to say that Abraham had the ability to affect people outside of his home, right? He'd go to communities or he people would come and he would have such an impact on people. How could he have an impact on all these other people? Clearly, then for sure he should have been able to have an impact on people in his house. Including Yishmael, which says that he went out because of his with his evil ways, his bad ways. But we know that he did chuba during the life of Abraham. So the question still stands. We say that, how can we say that she, that, that Hagar went and returned to the idol worshiping ways of her father? And that Abraham didn't have an effect on her that she would have done tshuva. We can't we can't we can't say that perhaps it's because we know that she was sent away, that she was from a she was separated from Avram. We know that Abraham had to send her and Yishmael away. Because we know already by the by the Akeda, the Akeda is Yitzchak, when Abraham went to sacrifice um, Yitzchak. We know that Yishmael was already back. Why? The Rashi ties the pasuk because Rashi brings an explanation on the verse as Shnei Nairav that that Abraham brought the two two men two young men with him when he went to go on his journey with Yitzchak, and he, it, Rashi explains that this is Yishmael Eliezer. So if Yishmael is back, the reason she she was sent out was also because she was sent out with Yishmael. So if Yishmael came back, seemingly she would have came back also. So we already know that she was back. So if them Rashi Keturah zu Hagar v'Nikras Keturah. So on this verse that Rashi is explaining that Keturah is Hagar, is ain hachinami durch an rufen Hagar mit nami Keturah may the pasuk says Murami zayin that the word Keturah is trying to hint and allude to as it's zayin and shayin now now I say Keturah. Now at this point she's changed her ways. That she really did tshuva. That she maybe she did return to her father's idol worshiping ways, but now she's done tshuva. She's back. She's returned to Hashem and the ways of Hashem. And also, we have to pay attention to Rashi is very precise in his in his verbiage always. So when it says Ketura zu hagar, nit he hagar. It doesn't say he hagar. She is hagar. It doesn't say Ketura she's hagar. It says Keturah, this is Hagar. And here's the difference. Uh, and he gives an example of that of of he, Hevrim, Here's an example where Rashi says he. So he Hagar, 
is a lashon nister, meaning the person's not present. She, you're talking about somebody else, somebody somewhere else. Vulgar mate, as the by the psukim ret kainen nit vegan hugger, zis vi ene versus nister. Talking about somebody who's not there. When we talk over zu hugger, but when he says on the other hand zu, this is hugger. Mate, this as hugger is lenoichach the ben chamish. So the Ben Chavish, the, the student that Rashi is teaching, has a question, right? From all the story, the whole story, we even hear about Yishmael and the whole thing. What's going on with Hagar? How come we don't see the fetish that she did, that she had done Shuba? So the Rebbe is Rashi Midayik, so Rashi is coming to say, Zu Hagar, this is Hagar. So all it's read Zichtak of Vegan Der Hagar, was the host was do host gefrek on gered with it's that he was that this is the question what's going on with Hagar where is she at where how come she didn't do tshuva what's the story with her what's going on so Rashi's coming to say ah this is Hagar so Rashi can zich aber nit banugin and mitem time alone but he was not satisfied with this explanation by itself while Evans taka as it's is knowing my sick katiris yes it's true that now she has done tshuva and she's changed her ways to be reminiscent of the katiris we bowed. That it came after the fact that since she had gone, there was a time where she had left and she had gone and returned to the idol worshiping ways of her father. But Abraham Avinu was is given at Senua Betachlis. Abraham Avinu is a is Senua. He's Senius. He follows the rules of modesty. And of course, all the halach is about if a person divorces their wife, Chas and then a, and she remarries, if they don't work out and then she she now is forbidden to her first husband, they can't remarry. So Abraham would have paid attention to that law. He would have followed that law. So the fact that he took her back, this is coming to show that she was never intimate with somebody else. So she was allowed to, she and he were allowed to rejoin. So that she didn't go with anybody else. This comes after we hear about Yitzchak bringing Rivka to the tent of his mother. Showing that Sarah and Rivka both were, were very tzniyas. They were modest. So Rashi is bringing down here that she stayed to herself. She didn't get, she wasn't intimate with anybody else. As in the Naman Ketura, is the is Roy as Abraham Zazi Nemet, that he was able to take her back. This is a sh proof that she was not intimate to anybody else. If you're going to have the question, oh, this is this is Hagar. We know that Hagar left and she rejoined her father's house and re, you know, uh, you know, got involved in the Veda Zara of, the, of her father's house all over again. Who knows what was going on with her? So this is what we're saying. She came back and she, because she hadn't been intimate with anybody else, so Abraham was able to Abraham Avinu was able to to take her back and marry her. So Apia now, based on what we've learned so far, as mit nam katura, when it comes to the name katura, is the Pasuk Maramas is Hagar Hat Durch Abraham's Hashpa Chuva Gitar. That through the influence of Abraham Avinu, she had done Chuva. She had returned to Hashem. So Kemin Mazbizaim, so we can explain Api Pnimius Ayanyana, based on the inner inner meaning of what we're looking at here, at the Khapratim in Pasuk, some of the details in the verse. That seemingly might not be so easy to understand. It might not be so smooth. So by looking in the panemius, we can have a better understanding of some things. Allah, first of all, be the Ketura Zu Hagar. Since Ketura is Hagar, we pass the Lotion for Yosef Abram. How does it how does it make sense that we can say that he took an additional wife? Like we had the question earlier in the beginning of the Sikha. Adar Kapsha, on simple understanding. This is Nikkei Kasha. It's not such a difficulty. Viba, oh, oh, sorry. Vachach, even though as Keturah Zu Hagar, we're going to say that Keturah is Hagar. Viba al Aber, as it is by Avram and given a Naya and Likicha. How can we say that if this is Hagar, fine. But how can we say that he took an additional Likicha? This is the point. It's the Likicha is the is the nuance, is the detail, right? Pass if them, the Lashon by Yosef. Because before, when Hagar was with Abraham Avinu, she was on the level of Shifcha. She was a maidservant. Now she was a wife, proper. She went from being 
a person who is a maidservant who doesn't have a ksuba to becoming a wife who actually has a ksuba. Because uh, they don't have, maidservant doesn't get a ksuba. But now she's a wife, she has a ksuba, a wedding contract. When it says kichas isha, that he took upon him, he took another wife, this is the nuance. You can't say about Hagar that she came back, an additional person came to the house. There's not an additional person coming to the house. However, when we look at her status before, we look at her status now, we say the status of having an additional wife, this we can apply to Hagar. Because when she was Hagar before, she was a maidservant, no ksuba, no marriage contract, but now she's coming as a proper wife with a marriage contract. So now we can explain it based on the, simple, the deeper meaning. So why the fact that she went off the derg, she went and joined the Avedah Zarah of her father's house, and she returned to Hashem, why specifically is it being compared to the Katairis? Right? In Gimel, what is the what is the Torah alluding to or hint? Why is it why is it choosing to allude to her having done tshuva as opposed to Davka and the Pasuk was read the Vegendum as Abraham Hot Ergenumen? Why is it choo choosing to allude to Hagar's tshuva through the fact that Abraham took her back? Why not say it or give it a, better, a different example, something else to allude to it, like they did with Yeshua? The beater in them, the explanation on this is like this. In Chassidus is mavoyer the chiluk zvishin the avedah from Avraham far zayim al zayinzich, and the avedah was nachdem. So Chassidus explains the difference in the approach of of Avraham Avinu's service to Hashem before he did the circumcision, and after he did the circumcision. Kaidim shenim al hatar gehes Avram, when before he did the circumcision, his name was Avram without a hey, was made of Ram, that he was. Of father, but Ram, he was exalted and separated from from the world. It is there, it is there. from the He was completely separated from the world. Ram al Kalgayim. He brings a pasuk, right? Exalted from all the other nations. Zayin Aveda is a madregus from kedusha gufa. That his whole service, his service for Hashem, the way he his work for Hashem was in holy pursuits. It's stuff, stuff, things that had nothing to do with the world. However, after he did the circumcision, his name became Avraham, which is Av Goyen, the father of the multitude of nations. Right? So instead of Instead of before he had the circumcision, he was only dealing in holy matters and matters of holiness. Now that he has a circumcision, he's actually dealing with the world. And not just dealing with the world, he still has a kesher and a connection to the holiness. So what is he doing? He What he's doing is he's making that he has a, an effect on the world itself to be connected to holiness. So he's elevating the world. Before he was only dealing with holiness, which is completely Ram. It was completely exalted and separated from the world. But now he did the circumcision and he's Av Hamayin Goyim. He's Av Raham, father of the multitude of nations. Being the father means he's having an effect that a new thing is being born out of the world itself, right? And being exalted and lifted to holiness. This is his whole Avaida after the circumcision. So, Undi Avaida, Undi Avaida is given Dorch Sara. And this particular Avaida was done through Sarah. Was hot from the Goyim Mafrik given the Psalis. What she did was separate from amongst the nations the the not good, the waste, the things that are not holy. Right? She would separate that. When Mila given their toiv in the Tutus Kedusha, she would and then she would elevate, she would accentuate and elevate the good and the holiness, the sparks of holiness that exist within the nations. So now we can so now we take a look at the fact that she sent Hagar and Yishmael away entirely. Because what she was doing was separating the good from the bad within the within a particular entity or a person or a nation. And she would take out the bad and accentuate and elevate the good. But with Hagar and Yishmael, she she got rid of altogether. So the fact that Abraham then took upon himself this work, 
after Sada passed away is, is we can see it in this pasuk that he took upon himself a new wife and her name is Keturah. That he was making uh, that he was causing that they, they did Tshuva, Yishmael and Hagar specifically, that they did Tshuva. That what she did was separate the good from the bad and elevate the good. But the Hasbara in them, what's the explanation over here? That Abraham did something different and was able to do this work with Hagar and Yishma, where Sarah said they have to go all together. So the bitter in the in the bitter in Goyim was Hot Sarah. The the purification or the yeah, I'll call that call it that the purification that took place with Sarah involved with the world and the nations of the world is not in Klipas Nega. There's levels of what's called klipa. There's godliness, godly energy. Everything is rooted in God and has the sparks of God in it. The only difference is the layer of the shell that conceals the godliness around it, around that spark of godliness. So just like when you look at fruit, there's different types of shells. There are shells that are thick and coarse and you can't get anything from the shell itself. But then there's also things that are, the shell itself is also edible. So you can say like something like an apple where the shell itself is good, right? So that's a very refined shell. Then let's say maybe an orange or something where you could discard it or you could eat it. There's good and bad kind of mixed in the shell itself. So there's three levels. So we would say that what Sara was doing was dealing with those who had a shell like an orange peel. Something that has good and bad, but is not neither. It's not neither. It's kind of both. It's got both mixed together. So what she was doing was taking the good, the bad, and separating it from the good, and then using the good itself. So since the good is not seen readily over over there. Considering with the psoilus, considering the waste, you can't actually see the good in the waste. That's why it gets discarded. Darvin is the river That's why it had to be discarded. So she said, Garish, she sent away um Hagar and Yishma. Over the beautiful Yishma and Hagar is nit dorach maile zain dem toiv hama uravos in zay. But with Hagar and Yishma, we said, shell was too coarse. They couldn't, you couldn't separate the good from the bad. Sarah couldn't. So she had to be sent away. So what is the, the, the coarseness of this? We didn't see the good in a revealed way by the two of them. Nor, So Tanya explains that the things that are so coarse and so bad, bad decisions, mistakes, sins, whatever you want to call them, there's such a concept of elevating or transforming that those bad into good. There's a difference. Something that is neither bad nor good can be elevated to good. But something which is bad is definitively bad. A missed opportunity is already done. That's already established. It is what it is. But there's a way to retroactively, indirectly transform it. Because you can't directly transform it, there's a way to indirectly transform it. So, uh, to transform the bad into good, you can say, that, for example, something that was done, that was bad, it was a mistake. You can't direct, one can't directly change that thing. It already took place. However, when that thing and the contemplation on that mistake is such a catalyst that it causes everything that comes after all the decisions and behaviors after that bad decision are good, then it causes that because that bad decision became the catalyst for all the good that came later, it transforms that bad into good. And so the only way to do this is through an indirect way. So this is the work that had to be done with Hagar and Yishmo. But how do you do this? How do you actually transform the bad into the good like this? It's by adding something new, adding something additional, right? So by the fact that the additional behaviors after the fact are good, it causes that the initial thing is transformed to good. So it's only by adding something additional that the transformation takes place. And this is the particulars and the nuance from the three explanations before. 
the Lashon of Yosef Abraham, the additional wife that was taken, while the Inyan from Mahapich Zayn Latayv Sailas Gimaklipas Atimeya is an Inyan from Haisafa, because in order to transform the coarseness of the the klipa, which is the coarse klipa, which calls Gimaklipas Atimeya, it's the unholy shells. In order to transform that, something has to be additional. Something has to be added to it. So we did Tzemach Tzedek Taishat and Pasuk. Tzemach Tzedek has an, a beautiful explanation on the verse of Yosef. Yosef Hashem li ben Achim. That the name Yosef, when, when Yosef was born, they named him Yosef because it says that Yosef Hashem li, that Hashem has given me an additional ben Acher, another son. Right? Yosef Hashem li, Hashem has added for me ben Acher, another son. Ben is son, and Acher is other, or another. So the Tzemach Tzedek explains this verse like this, as the inyan fun Yosef, Haisafa, that to add, is does was bemacht as fun an Acher zoverin a Ben, that we're able to make from someone who is an other, like a son, right? Somebody who's close. So this is the work. This is the whole point. On the Haisafa is bestayim, and the additional piece is twofold. Aleph in Valds is a Hisafa Bikidish in the Bria. First of all, you're making an additional and a new thing in the creation itself. According to the natural order of things, when you've done something, that's it. It is what it is. By nature, you can't change something, right? It's only through this indirect way. So in Avram, the in Bayes, in Avram, the Yosef Avram, and it says in Avraham, additional Avraham, he took another wife. The only way to actually transform this coarse shell is only through the power of Atmos. Atmos is Hashem as he exists to himself. Hashem created a world, he created a nature, both spiritual and physical, with which he interacts with the world. However, Hashem also exists in a way that has nothing to do with existence. And it's only through accessing that level of Hashem, which has nothing to do with creation, that you're that one, one is able to transform Gimaklipus Then it's saying, what does Hashem want? What does Hashem desire? Do we say that Hashem has a desire for the for the ways of the of the righteous or the ways of the of the Rishayim, the wicked. The point is, Hashem, as He exists to Himself, has nothing to do with this world. How can we say we have an effect on Him? So the philosophers are saying that Hashem, as He exists to Himself, He's not lacking anything. So to Him, it makes no difference in that realm. It makes no difference what the good, what what good is or what bad is. At that level, everything is 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 the same. There's no distinction because to Hashem, all that exists is Hashem. It's only as it pertains to the world, which of course matters to him in a different way, but only as it pertains to his involvement with the world. But Hashem, as he is to himself, there's no difference. How can we say there's a difference? The sins and bad mistakes and things that we've made, missed opportunities, are completely inconsequential to him. And it's only from that level where there isn't a distinction because sins are inconsequential, makes no difference, good or bad. Only in that level can bad be transformed to good because they're on the same level at that point. And this is what it means that Abraham by Yosef, there was an additional thing added here. As Durach then was by Abraham is Nisaisif Givaran a Hacher Kayak Vidarga that Abraham added to himself a new and higher level. He took upon himself a level of atzmas. Hashem, in Hagar where he's able to have an effect and an impact on Hagar and Yishma. Base. That she changed her ways. Now we're going back to this explanation on the fact that she changed her ways to resemble the katayrus. Davka, the word katayrus, the incense. While the Indian from the yud alef sumamani katayrus is kigidua, was designed in mahapach the yud alef kisrin demis avusa to kedusha. When it comes to klipa, there's, I'll say like this, katayrus, the incense, there's 11 species that go into the making of the incense. And the number 11 is very significant in Kabbalah. First of all, when we look at the building blocks of existence, there's 10 spheres, 10 holy emanations of godly energy, which is the building blocks of existence. Within that 10 is all of the order. So when there's something additional that's outside of that, 
we say it's another thing that would be the number 11. So 11 represents klipa in that there's the natural order of godly emanation, and then there's this other thing that's outside of godliness. However, 11 also sometimes in Kabbalah is an allusion to Kedusha, in that the whole word Kaddish means separate, so, to be separated from. So something that is separated from the natural order is something that's Kaddish, is holy, Kedusha. So that's also alluded to by the number 11. It makes, it, it matters, it, what the distinction is made in the context, obviously. So the Kateris is exactly this. It's transforming the 11 as it's, an, as it's a representation of Klipa, of a lack of godliness or a concealment of godliness and transforming it to 11 kedusha. So the tachlis from the yikach isha, so the purpose of saying that he took on a wife is pruervu. The whole purpose of, sorry, the whole purpose of taking a wife, of getting married, is pruervu, is in order to, for procreation, to have children. Vos ha'ilode is an inyin fun ha'isafa v'chidosh. Having children is a whole, obviously, the concept of something additional and something new. Right? This is the whole point that he took on Hagar, and what does it say? Right after this, the very next verse, after it's, or the continuation of this whole thing is was is Then they had children. Right? Abraham took a new wife, her name is Gatura, and they had children. So Bashaikh's to the Pasuk is da a super tamua be yesu in Gemara. There's a fascinating story in the Gemara that's brought now. It says, B'nai Achzid de Reb Tarfun, the sons of the sister of Reb Tarfun, his nephews, Havu Yazvik Kameh de Reb Tarfun, they were sitting near Reb Tarfun, V'loi Havu Amre Mide. Rashi explains that this means they were there, but they weren't engaged with him. So Pazuk Omar, he opens and says to them, and Rashi says, Kedesh Dabru, in order that they should engage with him. He says, Reb Tarfan says, "V'yisuf Avraham v'yikach isha." He says the verse: Avraham took upon himself a new wife, Ushma, and her name is Yochani. So Milsa ba'alma who the ka'amar kidei liftayach bihem. Rashi explains that he's trying to get their attention, so he says something different here. So Amre le, they say to him, "Keturiksiv." Hang on, it says her name is Ketura, right? So Kori alehem, he says to them, "Ah, oh, b'nei Ketura." He calls them sons of Ketura. What does this mean? Isn't it moving? First of all, for us to tell us the Gemara Bechla, why is the Gemara telling the story at all? Ubefrat as is Dacha Kla, as I feel the Gnus Behemoth Tmea Loi Dover Kasuv. The Torah, when referencing not the impure animals, it doesn't say the animals which are which are tame. It says animals she ain't a tahar, animals which are not pure. Right? It goes. The Torah goes out of its way to not speak disparagingly about even impure animals. Allah has come of a come of Gnusim from Bnei Achsin to Tarfun. How much more so? Should be the case that we don't speak disparagingly about the nephews of the great Reb Tarfu. So Muslim Zogan as in them is Faran Taira, a Hayra. So what is the Hayra? From here we have to say there has to be Torah. There has to be something in this the particulars of this story. The word Torah from the from the word Hayra, which means a lesson. So what's the takeaway here? Bayes, secondly, as Zainin Faran Fashidanatel Mitalin V. There had to be another way to, to sort of impact them or try to influence them to get them to sort of engage with him other than misquoting a verse in Torah. Why, like That seems so... Why would you do that? The third question is... And how? Why would you even use Torah like that, right? So for us, another question is for us... Why did he say Yaychani? Her name was Yaychani. If he was trying to change the language of the verse in order to get their attention, why not just say Hagar? At least it's different from what's written in the Pasuk. This is other Emes and Teichen. However, it's true. At least it's true, right? So he's not changing the, the content, but he's changing what the... What the uh, what the verse is? is And he brings. He says even for those that don't agree with the with the opinion that Keturah is Hagar, even still the fact of 
uh, the fact that it is an opinion that is brought, we say that these words and these words are all words of the living God, which is an illusion of the fact that whenever Hillel would say a, um, whenever Hillel would base Hillel, the house of Hillel, the school of Hillel would say his, um, their example, their ruling on something, they would use Beis Shammai's ruling as a sort of a launch pad to then go into their opinion it's proof that you can still use, utilize something that you don't agree with. So from this, you can say, even if he didn't agree with the fact that Keturah is Hagar, he could have still used it. He could have, still could have said Hagar, right? So Vetman, Vetman does verstehen, behagten does was chazal, zagen kol, hamelamed es ben chaveja teirin, maile alav akasuf ge'ilu yadai. We have to say, we look over here and it says, the sages say that a person who teaches somebody Torah, it's as if they've, they've uh, given birth to them. Right, they created a new life out of this person. Because through learning Torah, a person becomes a completely new entity, a new existence. It's as if they gave birth to them. It says that every any person who teaches Torah to the son of their friend is as if they've given birth to them. Is it shows that even if the person already had a little Torah. This is other kamuvim be'ikur by azah versus biz it nit nit given shayech to limit a tayra because but it's specifically about a person who doesn't have any Torah was demo to take them and lament a his chadshus in the ben chaveri masha enkein over hot shayin friyik and learn tayra is doch the malamed noch nor meisif of the friyik is the idea of mitzias so when a person has no shayeches that no connection to learning Torah and you give them Torah they become a completely new being but a person who does have a little bit of Torah you're still adding to what they already are you're still adding to that right so the mid is for standing the shino yaloshin and Peter Rashi of the elu tolu dois Aaron and Moshe on the puzzle and it says um, these are the sons of Moshe, of Aaron and Moshe and we know from context it was only speaking about the sons of Aaron so it's explained Vinikras told us Moshe lefisha lamed and tater melamed shakola melamed kule maile alav akasum ki ilu yadai it says about them, why are we saying the sons of Aaron and Moshe? Because Moshe taught them Torah. So it was as if they were also his sons. And it says, But because it was the, the day that Moshe taught them Torah, It says that they became his children. By B'nai Aaron. They became his children. Not as if. He had given birth to them, right? However, we just said that a person who teaches somebody Torah it's as if they've given birth to them. So is the Tam Bezer, the explanation on this is like this. Because the sons of Aaron were there the day that, that Moshe Rabbeinu received Torah for the first time. This is the beginning of their learning Torah, any Torah. He was the source of all the Torah they got. So this was like a completely new being. The day that he learned it from Hashem himself. They became a new entity. So It says it without Ke'ilu, which means as if. However, in our situation, we're saying all those who teach somebody, meaning all ways of learning Torah from here on out, is it's only as if They've given birth to them, but not actually becoming children, like we said with Meishu Rabbeinu and our own sons. Thus is Eich the Bitter in a Sipur Hanal. This is the explanation in the story. Reb Tarfin Hot Gazan as Bnei Achzi Zayin Nit Shaych to Divrei Vahavanas Atayra. He saw that his nephews had no Shaychus to learning and understanding Torah, so it would be bad as they have a Shaychus to him. But because they had a connection to him, Hot Gavod Eifton in Zay as Zalin Veren Shaych. So Havadah Satayra, he wanted to impact them that they should also have a connection to understanding Torah. Then Ke'ilu Yalda, and this was as if he had given birth to them, or they were, as if they were his children. So if them Hota Gebracht and Inyan had Dugmasi and Taira. So on this we say that there's an example from the Torah itself. Ve'Yosef Avram Ve'Ikach Isha. It's an example of this pasuk in Torah that his she, that Abraham had taken upon himself a new wife was tachlisus to live vida hemshech take of nachtem v'teilidle because the whole purpose of taking a wife in particular over here taking the the wife of Keturah was in order to have children which is what happens in the in later uh, pasuk azoi hot red tar from getana pa'ula pasach 
So this is why Reb Tarfan was trying to engage in them and using this verse in particular in order to engage with them and cause for them to have new life and basically like create offspring out of them that they become Torah Yidin. So I'll be Zayuvan. Based on all this, we can understand what's her hot gezag ushma yoichani. Why he said, and her name was yoichani. So this is interesting. So the Gemara is zog in Saita. It says in Masech the Saita, a different different Gemara. As our mother Shayvavis, I think as our mother Shayvavis is from the Mavale Oilam that a a social widow, a widow who's very neighborly, is is among those who erode the world. We explain why. Kegoyin yoichani basri TV. Because there was a particular woman named Yoichani, the daughter of Retivi. So as Rashi Mufarash Rashi explains that Almana Mikhashefa Haisa. She was a widow who was a witch. She was a sorceress. When a woman was giving birth, she was able to, with her sorcery, close up the woman's womb. She would, when this woman was in so much pain, she would show up and say, Oh, do you want me to go and daven for mercy for you? Right? Maybe he'll listen to my prayers. She would go and she would remove and then she would remove this spell that she cast or whatever it was, and then the woman would give birth. Right? She was trying to make believe that she was the cause of this miraculous birth. Okay? And then that the miracle was happening through her davening. The fact that he called her Yoichani. The whole purpose of the name Yoichani is to show the Indian of a miracle. Right? Something that's a miracle. Visa is for standing from them. Was the Gemara Zogd in Brachas, as it says in Brachas, a different Gemara says, Hareya Huna Bechalem, a person who sees Rahuna in his dreams, Nes Nasale, like a miracle will happen for him. And Yoichanan, the person who sees Yoichanan in their dreams, Nise Nisim Nasale, even greater miracles will happen for them. Right? So we see the illusion from Yoichanan or Yoichani, the, 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 the Iker is the word Chain. Ultimately, so and specifically the fact that Yoichani had a specific uh, connection, not just with the word Yoichanan or Chain or anything like this, that's a, an allusion to miracles, but also specifically in our story in this Gemara, it's an allusion to it's a it's connected to childbirth, which is the whole what we're talking about here. So via state, and the verse says, "You have given me children, Hanan graciously. God has graciously bestowed upon me His servant children. Children, right? Hanan, the word Hanan being uh, gracious, right? And therefore, And this is why Reb Tarfin changed the name to Yechani. He wanted to really drive home this concept of giving birth and having you know trick creating offspring out of these children that, that they would uh, that they would become Torah which is not the natural way the natural order and because it's not not the natural order this is what had to take place and this is also the explanation the explanation on the continuation of the story as they said no and they said, wait a second. It says her name was Keturah. Reb Tarfan responded by calling them the sons of Keturah. If it's, if it's written that Keturah is her name, which is a whole Indian of tying, which is like the story of Yechani, where she tied the womb of, the, of these women, which is the opposite of a miracle. When it comes to the childbirth, right? Bet zichnit oiftan by zay the inyan ha'haylada in limud ha'tayra. It's seeming almost like he's causing the opposite when in a 
wanting to create offspring in their learning of Torah. The psichas hamayach in havana zatayra, just like tying means to close off, it's like becoming closed-minded, and then they can't learn and understand Torah. They'll stay closed-minded and tied up and not be able to learn and understand Torah. But, light bitter hanal sifhein involved, what we said earlier, in Vayes of Abraham, that Abraham took an additional wife. When we look at the wine of Torah, just like wine, you work the wine and bring out this beautiful drink, the wine. And also when you drink wine, the secrets come out, right? So too, when you look at Rashi, the author ever referred to Rashi as the wine of Torah, you can learn out beautiful insights from Rashi. So he says, As we bowed, Avram hot gedarf oiftana hisafa bechidosh. Because Abraham was able to impact and create an additional and new Hailada, birth, a thing, by transforming the coarseness of Hagar into Kedusha, holiness. We said earlier that there was an addition to Avram himself. He himself took on an additional piece that raised him to a new level. We can explain on the deeper explanation, why he included in his verse, by Yosef Avram, Avram took an additional. What does this mean? Seemingly, he could have just said, took an additional, he took an additional wife and her name is Yechini. Why did he have to say, they would have known what verse he was referring to. It's the only verse that says he took a wife and her name was. So today, as a result, that's what he, because what he was trying to do was teach Torah to the children. He wanted to create a new entity out of these children. He had to add an additional piece to his own level. Only then could he actually have an impact on the, the sons of his sister, his nephews, that this was the way that he was able to impact by creating by Yosef Avram by bringing on himself a new level this high level that gave him the ability to do it since it was particularly this taking on of the level of Atzimus Reb Tarfa needed also to change himself, to bring himself to a new level. So he added in by Yosef Avraham to impact himself, to bring himself to this high level, right? That would then lead to the continuation of the birth that was given with Avraham and Keturah, and that he could create from his own nephews a new entity. And this is why he called them the sons of Keturah. Right, the Rambam paskin as bnei keturah shehem zare shel Avram. The Rambam ruled that the sons of Keturah are the sons of Avraham, and therefore chayavin b'mila. They became obligated in the mitzvah of circumcision. Thus, hes as durach by Yosef Avram veikach isha ushma keturah. By the verse that Avraham took a new wife and her name was Keturah, was is an Indian from his chadsh shalei alpi seder shtaushalus, which is a whole Indian of bringing something new. He took not only when Keturah converted, she didn't just change that she was now Jewish. She converted all of her descendants for the end of time that they also are Jewish and chayev to have Mila, the circumcision. The verse, who will descend, who will ascend to the heavens on our behalf? If you take the Rosh Tevis, the first letter of each word in that verse, it's Mila. Mem, Yud, Lamid, Hey, Mila. Right? And Shesaifa Hatevis Hu Havaya. And if you take the last letter of each word in that phrase, in that verse, you see the name of Hashem Himself. So what do we learn from this? Says Hacher from Bechina Satayr and Shem Havaya. We see that Mila is actually higher than the Torah and Hashem's name himself. himself. 
So the Mila is on such a high level. And what is a Mila? Uh, uh, when we do the circumcision, is an allusion to the fact also that Hashem should remove the layer around our heart as well, which obviously means tshuva, returning to Hashem, becoming refined. And this is why he said, he called them the sons of Keturah. He was, by him calling, he wasn't just calling them, just like we learned earlier with Adam and Rishon, that he called the animals their name. He was and drawing down their essence and giving it to them. That he, so Reb Tarfan was doing the same thing by calling his nephews Bnei Keturah. He was also Kaira Umamshik and bringing down this level of a new birth to them in Limera Taira Shalayapi Seder Stalshalis in the learning of Torah, not by the natural order of things, but Alderik di Fa'ulufun Avram in Bene Ketura, but by doing it through the way that Avram did, which was by drawing down the level of Atzmas Hashem himself into himself, that he could then have a proper impact on his nephews, which is obviously the lesson that we're supposed to take, that in order to impact others, we have to take upon ourselves to impact ourselves as well. Thanks for coming. Shabbos.